Atalanta is underway. One mile run. 20 pound weight vest for the men, 14 pound weight vest for the women. There are 602 scored repetitions in this event, and this opening mile counts as well. It, it does. It counts as one on our scoring table as we're looking. What I'm not looking at is actually Matt and Tia just hanging back, watching things unfold, realizing they have an entire marathon of reps and movements to go, and just letting the and letting those that need to duke it out for something, fighting for podium style, duke it out. And one of those is Carrie Pierce. If you looked at the numbers, you based off her performances in Murph and her performances in Mary on paper. Carrie should be the favorite for this event on the women's side. I, I would almost go as far to say she should be the favorite across the board of men and women's side, but it makes me nervous that she's jumping out to the front on the run. Uh, the runs is not her strength. She needs to save her strength for the meet, that 100, 200, 300. And the fact that she's jumping out of here in the front, she's going to be pushed by Haley, and I don't know if that's going to be the best move for her, especially when you have the champs, Tia and, and Matt, was sitting way in the back just coasting. Event 12 is presented by Fit Aid. And this is as much a physical test as it is a mental one. It is, and it's because of the volume of work you have to do. No one has ever thought about doing an unpartitioned Mary version of Murph with a weight vest. So this is a unique test of strength, fitness, but most of all will because it is the end of a long, long weekend. And the quiet your mind, what does that mean? You have a long time and a lot of reps to get out of your own head. Whereas you can't look and think about the 300 pull-ups while you're doing 100 handstand push-ups. you got to stay inside your own head because there's going to be a lot of times where those negative thoughts and those negative voices come creeping in for out what could be the 50 to 60 minutes of work these athletes have to compete in. And those voices get so loud when you're out there by yourself like that with no music, no headphones, no crowds. It gets loud. It really does. Haley Adams and Carrie Pierce out early here on this first one mile run. And let's talk about just the breadth of tests that we've seen here. If you remember back to Saturday morning, the Toes of Bar lunch, accessible to anybody. Anyone can do that event. Could That's be cons simpler. Consumer grade CrossFit, we'll call it. <laughs> this, not consumer grade CrossFit. <laughs> this is the event that if you are a coach, owner, or program for your affiliate, you need to lock inside a box. <laughs> <laughs> Get a double key turn accessibility, and then bury it into the abyss of the of the uh, of the ocean. Because this is one that every like everybody wants to do the hard event at the games. Everybody wanted to do, and I don't know why, the marathon row the next day. Check this out. I'm like it took me two years to nut up for that one. But this is one that is not made for your average, above average, or even very good CrossFitter. You just saw the overall standings for the women. Haley Adams sits in third place overall. She's looking to become the first American woman on the podium since Julie Fouché in 2014. If Carrie Pierce is going to overtake that spot, she's got to beat her by two places. And then if that happens, then we talk tie breaks. But in order for her to have a chance, that's Carrie Pierce, to get on the podium, she's got to beat Haley Adams by two places. Which is totally doable. Carrie can beat Haley, and she only needs Tia to middle so well, it's completely possible. And that's but that's looking at it on paper. This has been a long weekend, a very a very arduous weekend. We've seen Carrie have some highs and lows. So even though on paper this is an event that's almost tailor made for her bar in her history or with her history, does she have the mental capacity to push? Haley's just been chomping at the bit at every chance she gets. So this is gonna be a big battle for those two. And that's what comes in the will and the want to. Can she? Yes, but does she want to? Because <laughs> that's a big ask for an event like this. Haley Adams is in the lead, Carrie Pierce behind her, and then you saw the pack of athletes. They're now making the turn, and Matt Fraser and Tia Toomey running this together right now, and in the back. And why not? And it's not a matter of like they're mailing it in. They have a full understanding of where the event is going to take shape. And it's not the 100 handstand push-ups, and it's not the 200 pistols, but it's the three hundred pull-ups and the last run oh yeah is where this event is really going to start to take shape i mean how many times have we seen even the crossfit games when murph was handed out who wins the mile you don't see him after that so what is going to happen we see Harry, uh, we see Haley really pushing the envelope here she is pulled i mean making a large distance between her and the rest of the field 
she has to make sure she's smart about that in her head. But she looks like she's very comfortable. Where this isn't a Joe Scally moment in 2015. <laughs> well, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus there, but. Well, uh, you know, I, I think you can take it. He knows what he did. <laughs> Past the five-minute mark on this opening one-mile run of the final event of the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games. And just to sum up, one-mile run, 100 handstand push-ups, 200 pistols, 300 pull-ups, and then a final one-mile run. All the men and all the women competing together. The first time we've seen that at a finale at the CrossFit Games. I think it's very, very cool how Dave set this up, how he put it together, and not just the event itself, but putting all the athletes in one massive heat, putting Matt and Tia side by side in the lane next to each other. Because at this point in time, is they're, you know, they're, it's a, the longest victory lap of all time, maybe the hardest <laughs> victory lap of all time. But what it is, is it's an opportunity to see greatness side by side competing in the same exact event. Haley Adams with the cross country background, so really no surprise that she's out front on this one mile run, but we'll see how that affects her as she works her way back to the barn and she'll start those 100 handstand push-ups. I, I really think she's got some nice things holding for it. She's got that, that cross-country background. She has that gymnastic background. She did well in Mary last year when they had in 2019 games. So this is a great opportunity for her to really make something happen. And we've seen her really grind. When it gets dirty, she hangs in there. She really does a great job with that. Has a great training crew at CrossFit Mayhem. And for a 19-year-old, she has a really strong mental game as well as a great physical game. Now, whether or not she winds up finishing on the podium, you're clearly looking at the future of the sport right here. 100%. Haley being one of them and Medeiros being the second. I'm, you know, she's 19, Medeiros is 21. I'm, I'm excited to see the dominance and the greatness. It's just a showcase. Superstars. Superstars and legends of the sport making their history as we go step by step, but what the future holds It's not going to be the same old players over and over and the new blood is leading this event so far I know it's early. We have yet to get to the <laughs> you get to the handstand push-ups, but I like her composure Just she's almost unflappable. There's things she's good at and things she's not but either one success or failure seems to bother her. Haley Adams making her way back to the competition floor Carrie Pierce behind her and then Catherine David's daughter was in third David's daughter second place overall coming into this event she has just has to avoid a disaster here to hang on to second place if she finishes third or better for the women she's going to clinch that second place regardless of what the other athletes do so she's in the driver's seat as far as second place is concerned now here comes Haley Adams 100 handstand push-ups Now the rest of the field working their way back to the competition floor. I'm honestly really impressed how everyone is being overly composed. I mean, they know it's a race. Brandon, Matt, and Tia, they can, they can afford to hang back, even though that's not necessarily their style. It doesn't really matter if they have it clinched or not. Uh, but the group as a whole really seems to not uh, to be giving this this event the respect that it deserves yes they're not just going like okay i'm gonna get out there and get crazy <laughs> they're being very respectful so that they can finish this strong and appropriately at the end justin madero says just inverted himself he's in lane three he's getting to work on his 100 handstand push system Madero's like Haley adams youngest man in the field sitting in third place and for order for him to give that up either jeff adler or noah olsen is going to have to beat him by at least two spots and if this weekend proves anything, that's completely doable. <laughs> now the way things have shook up. Just 40 points separating Noah Olson and Justin Medeiros. Now what's going to be interesting with Medeiros is I think this element right here is going to be his weakest part. We saw him run great on the run. Uh, we know he's got a lot of leg strength, but where he was weak was in the total in that strict press. So yes. you are going to feel it in the shoulders definitely here. So I want to see how he's going to break this up. Keeping it small numbers to be able to get past, especially that, that, that last 50 is where it's going to get dicey for him. 602 total scored repetitions in this event. The first one mile run counted as one, and then 100 handstand push ups. So at the 101 rep mark, the athletes will move on to the pistols, and Haley Adams is through now 49. 
of those 602 score full score repetitions as Carrie Pierce is making quick work of the handstand push-ups and now she is in the lead Oh, we saw the same thing in Mary. I'm surprised she's even kipping at all because she did <laughs> in the entire Mary event last year with strict handstand push-ups. She's through 51 of the 100 handstand push-ups. Tia Toomey, your overall leader. 15 reps back of Carrie Pierce. We're just making methodical work of these right now. We said. The miles, the buy-in to the 100 handstand push-ups. The 100 handstand push-ups is the buy-in to the pistols, and then the pistols are the buy-in to the real work. That's the 300 pull-ups they're going to have to do on the tail end. The athletes who tested this were all either one of them. I think Chrissy Aramo O'Connell was sub-50. Sub-50. <laughs> <laughs> and is, everybody else was under an hour. <laughs> Which is faster than my normal Murph of <laughs> right. pull-ups, push-ups, and air squats. <laughs> Carrie Pierce in her sixth straight CrossFit Games really had an outstanding performance last year. And it was a derivation of this event, Mary, where she really put an exclamation point on what she was able to accomplish in 2019. Carrie Pierce now 78 reps in, 602 total, total scored repetitions, and at the 101 mark, that's when she'll move on to the 200 pistols. You're mentioning Carrie being, you know, first time she's in 2015 or her sixth appearance. The 2015 class of women are well represented here. Oh, yeah. Tia Toomey, Carrie Pierce, Brooke Wells, and that was the comeback year for Katrin Davis' daughter after missing at 14 and having marginal success in 12 and 13. So really that 2015 group of women has been a Hall of Fame class of athletes. Over on the men's side, Jeffrey Adler is your leader through 62 of the 100 handstand push-ups. Well, five up on Noah Olsen right now. There's another element to this gymnastic component that is the weight fix. What was normally considered a body weight benefit, the added of the weight adds that strength element to it as well. And Carrie Pierce is done with her 100 handstand push-ups and now on to the 200 pistols. Remember, Pierce is in fifth place overall. If she wants to move up to third, she's got to beat Haley Adams by at least two spots. Something I'd really like to see is sitting in the position she was on the leaderboard after 11 events. And the first two events of today really did not play in her favor no. whatsoever. It was a brutal sprint, not the best swim. So it's really easy to come in here and mail it in, especially with the difficulty of this event. But what does she do? It looks like she took what these are two events combined that I may be the best at of the field, Bill, like you had said earlier. So. I love to see her in this position that she's not taking the 12th event off. She is going for it, and she still has the potential to get up there in the top three. So send it down to Nikki, who is right by the competition floor there at the ranch. Something very interesting is happening down here, you guys, in lanes five and six. Matt and Tia are training partners, obviously, and they almost appear to be attacking this workout like they were partners in their gym back home. They're taking the same breaks, doing the same rep scheme. You can't quite hear them, but it looked like they were kind of like looking over at each other, talking, hey, you okay, can't, let's get, let's come down, let's get back up on the wall again. Just really interesting to see them and side both by of their side. Their judges' down here hands are in the air. So Fraser with five to go he's your leader for the men right now adler sits in second olsen in third medeiros and then sam quant and now fraser and toomey moving on to the pistols <laughs> i think they shop at the same store too they train together and shop at the same store together and carrie pierce continues to lead for the women through 49 now 50 of the 200 pistols Matt Fraser, your leader. Adler, seven reps behind him, followed by Olsen, Medeiros, and Quant. And Fraser even went to the ice bucket there and dunked that hat into it before he put it on his head. I mean, you'd be surprised how much of a massive difference that makes if you're thinking about overheating. You see that a lot in distance events, say like triathlons. They have these ice-cold towels on the courses, and you wrap that around your neck, and it 
the cooling effect it has is dramatic. So that's a, a savvy move by Matt Fraser. Absolutely. And remember, that was the big issue with the first Merc pit that we did was all that heat exhaustion. So if you can keep that heat down, especially that that's where all your heat goes from your head, cool that down, smart move. Frazier, your leader for the men right now, through 120 of the 602 total scored repetitions at 201. Pardon me, 301 is when he will move on to the 300 pull-ups. There's Jeff Adler who sits in second place. He is the only other man on the pistols right now through 11 of the 200. And these are the most reps that we've seen for these movements in any games workout ever. I mean, they only be matched by Mary from last year, where the best of the best did 20 to 22 plus. So the volume, when it when it was first announced, seemed excessive, but they've done it before. The biggest wrinkle to that is the weighted vest element of the volume itself. It dr it does change that dramatically on what that would do on the the body towards oh the end. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the. Uh it doesn't seem like much, but it is a ton of giant insult, giant assault. Noah Olson in his seventh straight Cross of Games appearance, looking to finish on the podium for the second straight year, but right now fifth place overall, and he's got to stay ahead of Justin Medeiros and Jeff Adler in order to get himself back into that position. Carrie Pierce is your leader for the women, as she is almost halfway done with the pistols now through 100 of those Haley Adams the closest woman to her she's through 62 and counting so a sizable lead right now for Carrie Pierce if she wants to get on the podium she's got to beat Haley Adams by two spots and you know what in all reality what Carrie is doing she might be pushing it harder now than she needs to, but she's trying to bank a little bit of distance between her and, and the likes of like uh, uh, Haley Adams. Haley's a very good runner. Carrie classically isn't a very good runner. And so she needs and she needs to do so well. So she's got to try to push that envelope as much as she can. I mean, it might as well run the wheels off. Yeah, well, she's got a three last event. She's got a 300 pull up leg break between the pistols and the mile run. <laughs> These are your leaders in this event. Matt Fraser, the bottom left, Kerry Pierce on the right side. Fraser is through 67 of the 200 pistols. Jeff Adler is in second behind, behind him. Olsen's in third, and then Medeiros and Sam Kwan just got to work on his pistols. 301, that's the number that Kerry Pierce is looking for before she will move on to the pull-up bar. In this event, keeping with the theme that we have seen all weekend at the ranch, things just get turned up to 11 when you go to Aromas. Unless you're talking about the music volume and it's all the way down <laughs> to zero. <laughs> Men's scoring hat, top of your screen, shows Matt Fraser through 185 now of the 602 total scored repetitions. Sam Quant, who came in in second place overall, looking to stay wow. there. He is going to finish on the podium, but right now he is in fifth place for the men in this event. Well, there he is, just going the speed limit, checking his side view mirrors, maybe adjusting the rear view mirrors, putting on this seat belt, making sure everything checks out. It's a long event. We got a long, it's, we're barely to the 20-minute mark, and this is going to take nearly an hour. So he's got a lot of room left to make up some ground on these athletes. Carrie Pierce is into her final set of 50. And as far as the gender battle goes right now, four of the women are ahead of the men right now. Tia and Matt moving together. I think you'll probably start to see a shift of that moving once we get to the pull-ups. So you're talking about handstand push-ups, even the run, good to go. Pistols, good to go. But that high-volume gymnastic pulling, the men will have a slight advantage on that unless it's Carrie Pierce. And Carrie Pierce will probably <laughs> do all these pull-ups strict and not bat an eye. But we may see that gap close in the second half of this event. Carrie Pierce creeping closer to that 301 rep mark. Tia Toomey right now is in fourth place in the heat. She's through 107 of the 200 pistols. And Haley Adams keeping Pierce close to her, although by 40 reps but remember in order for Haley Adams to surrender that third place spot to Pierce Pierce has got to beat her by two spots so right now Haley Adams looking okay I like what she's at again 
Staying poised, keeping calm, waiting until we get to the pull-ups before things start to take shape. And knowing full well that she does have that last mile as an advantage for her coming into the end. Fraser continues to lead for the men. One of the nicest things you could ever have. And you just, you know, that you've done team stuff. When you have your teammate there pushing you, keeping you going, if it starts to get a little rough, that always helps people along. Same thing happens in the SEAL teams or in firefighter crews or whatever. The two champs on the floor are the only ones that have now have that team camaraderie where they can kind of push each right. other, let everyone know that, hey, you're fine. Not that they wouldn't, couldn't right. do that on their own. Right. But that just makes them that much more deadly to the rest of the field. That keeps them so calm because they have that protection of their team. No one else has that on the floor. Well, they also don't have to worry about one of them beating the other just because they're doing opposite competitions from each other. So it, that is, it has. it's nice to have someone in your ear or someone to talk to. Yeah. Matt will have that with other athletes, say, like, you know, his buddies on the competition floor, but he's still trying to beat them. Yep. Him and Tia next to that guy, I like that. It's a very good idea to have. It's like... Just someone to stay positive with for a long duration event like this. Carrie Pierce is just about done with those 200 pistols. One rep to go, and she will now move on to the 300 pull-ups. She has done 100 handstand push-ups, run a mile, and 200 pistols in 21 minutes. And I was so curious about what the first set was going to look like. Are we going to go set the Whoa. five and... Man, she just... Ten. Wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> We're going with ten. Okay. <laughs> so Matt and Tia now are on their final set of pistols. And they are just content to stay right next to each other and work as a team here. I am very curious and excited to see what happens when they get to the pull-up bar. Yeah. So I feel like... Well, it's either going to go two ways. They're just going to stay in cruise control, finish the event together side by side. Or are they just waiting for the big part of this event, which is the pull-ups? Terry Pierce is your leader, 323, now 24 reps and counting. When she gets to 601, she'll take off on her last mile. Haley Adams, who is in third place overall, is in second place right now in this event and looking to become the first American woman to finish on the podium since 2014 at just 19 years old. Ooh, Pierce now through no 35 of the 300 pull-ups. Let's check back in on the men's race where Matt Fraser is through 100 78 of the 200 pistols. Jeffrey Adler, meanwhile, has 50 to go, as does Noah Olson. So Noah Olson is two spots ahead right now of Justin Medeiros. And remember, that is what has to happen for Olson to have a chance of finishing third. But Jeffrey Adler came into this event in fourth. So Olson ahead of him right now. But he's got to continue to hold him off if he wants any shot of getting back onto the podium. There we still got a long way to go. Long way to go. Finishing 200 pistols. Most of these athletes are within 50. Although Quant just passed 100. Olsen is through 166 and counting. Fraser through 193. And Adler through 164. Now 165. Haley Adams is just about done with her pistols, and she will join Carrie Pierce on the pull-up bar. And Katrin Davis' daughter is catching up as well. David's daughter has closed the gap with Haley Adams. So three women on their sets of 300 pull-ups, as Matt Fraser and Tia Toomey have now finished as well, and they will move to the pull-up bar. So now the race tightens. And that's good for Carrie Pierce if she's trying to get into that third-place position on the podium. You've got two former champions chasing down the one person she needs them to beat. <laughs> Carrie Pierce is through 69 of the 300 pull-ups. Davis' daughter through 15, so she is past Adams now. 
for second place in the heat. Adams sits in third. She's through 15 and now pulling almost even with Davis daughter. So that's the fight right now going on between Catherine Davis daughter in the yellow and Haley Adams in the blue. Carrie Pierce needs some help from Catherine Davis daughter right now. And these some big sets. Everyone's ripping off. Start with 10, 10 plus. Pierce is dropping down to sixes and fives. Noel Olson putting the finishing touches on his set of 200 pistols, and he will move to the pull-up bar. It's going to be good for Noah. High volume pull-ups. Olson is done. And I'm really impressed with the tempo that he was going at those pistols. He was right next to Adler, and Adler was, was almost a second and a half, two seconds break in between each rep. Noah was able to rep those out and really kind of, really kind of rapid fire. It. Matt Fraser is your leader for the men. He is through 10 of the 300 pull-ups. Noah Olson is the only other man on the pull-up bar, although Jeff Adler is getting close to joining him. Ooh. Ooh. Man. Fraser threw 20 of his 300. Toomey threw 20. So they're just content to keep the exact same pace here. Sam Quant is trying to stay in second place. Noah Olson is looking to leapfrog into the top three. And right now, he's got one person between himself and Justin Medeiros. Again, exactly what he needs to have that 40 point difference then he start playing the tiebreaker game if that's where it stands by the end by the end of the event you mentioned sam quant he is in the back there behind matt fraser on the right he has 50 pistols to go justin Maderos has 20 to go so sam quant again has clinched a spot in the top three he's in second right now But both Adler, Olsen, and even Medeiros all have a shot of moving into the top three with him. Carrie Pierce still leads for the women through 111, so more than a third of the way done with her 300 pull-ups. And one of the things you can start to see where you see the fatigue is in that drop. There's almost a snap in the shoulders. You might not feel it in the first hundred like these athletes. You're going to start to see it by the second hundred in the 200 in these athletes. And the last hundred is going to be rough. Here are the overall standings once again coming into this event. Catherine Davis' daughter has clinched a spot on the podium. Haley Adams right now sits in third. Carrie Pierce 40 points back of Adams. So she has to beat her by two spots in order to even have a chance to get on the podium and right now Pierce is getting some help from the woman on the left of your screen Catherine Davis daughter Davis daughter even with Haley Adams right now on the pull-ups both into the 80s Davis daughter through 88 Adams through 85 See, Davis daughter is going past her but it does seem like she's working a bit harder for those pull-ups than Haley is Pierce no, you're continuing right. to chip away at that 300. See that snap in yeah. the shoulder? Yeah, that's it, going to get nasty. And it's less of a guiding down into a nice smooth sweep for what it, a butterfly pull-up would be, but almost a drop in that jerk at the bottom, like a free fall. Totally. Well, this is one of the things, like, when you talk about in the regular CrossFit gym, the danger of doing keeping pull-ups like this is that you don't have the strength in the shoulders yet. Obviously, these athletes do. But you can start to see, even when they get fatigued, how you're going to have that snap and how you're going to have that shoulder work. Gary Pierce threw 437 of the 602 reps, and the two champions, rep for rep, working at the exact same pace. Tense. Fraser threw 80 pull-ups. Toomey threw 80 pull-ups. Ten at a time, still. And neither one is in any hurry right now. Noah Olson is two spots up on Justin Medeiros. Olsen's got to make up 40 points and beat Medeiros by two spots for him to have a chance of getting into the top three. Meanwhile, Sam Quant, the man who came in in second place overall, still in fifth place in this event on his pistols. He's only got a couple more now. 
the man who has finished first and second today in the other two events will move on to the pull-up bar and begin his set of 300. Now, I'm sure you guys are just like me. I love to chalk. I love to chalk my <laughs> hands. And the reason it's so important here, you get your hands sweaty with all this work that you're doing. If you have that grip moving, see their grips moving on that. If you get a tear now, yes. this will ruin this event for you. So you have to make sure that you're being very smart about your grip, very smart about how you're holding onto the bar and what you're doing to take care of that. That's what happened to Saxon. Is the 30-minute mark appropriate to do a disclaimer of no one should try this set? Yeah, when do, we get to, when do we get to see the warning, the warning labels on this one? Well, like you said, if you're a coach, take this yeah. event and lock it away and don't let anybody... I'm just going to bury it down deep and never bring it up again. Now, Bill, what you said about chalking up and that you're not wanting your hands to move, how you rip on a pull-up bar is oh, yeah. actually when your hands slide excessively on the pull-up bar. That's how the tear happens. It's not a sticky bar. If your hands don't move, rarely are you going to rip as often as if you were just rubbing your hands back and forth where that friction causes the rip in the hands. Well, Carrie Pierce is through 467 of the 602 total scored repetitions. She is through 100. 69 now 170 of the 300 pull-ups Catherine Davis daughter has opened up a little bit of a lead on Haley Adams and that's big for Pierce See if you look at what you're talking about chase where their hands are on that bar The idea is to keep those knuckles on top of the bar so there isn't a whole lot of moving around The chalk ideally is to kind of keep them dry because if your hands are sweaty and it slips and that drops now You have a lot of movement. You do not want movement of your palm on that bar. Haley Adams looks like she might have a little blood on her hands right now. Oh, ah. Her right hand looks like. And I've been there. You just can't you can chalk that it. enough. You can't ch out chalk the blood once it starts. Well, look at Carrie's grip. Look at how little movement there is when her hands are on the bar. Whereas you see is now it starts to happen for Haley. Is she's going more to that fingertip grip, which doesn't put as much palm on there. Because usually you rip those calluses right at the base of the fingers on the top of your palm, not really the middle one. You want to stack that on there and try to lock in. Here's your leader for the women in this event. Matt Fraser, your leader for the men. Through 139 now pull-ups and counting as he approaches the halfway point. Tia Toomey right there with him. She is in fourth place in this event for the women. Both Toomey and Fraser through 140 of the 300 pull-ups. Uh, to be a fly on the wall right now between these <laughs> two guys. I want to know what they're saying so bad. What do you want for dinner? In and out? Hey, or, uh, hey so what are we going to be training to tomorrow? <laughs> Noah Olson, meanwhile, in second place for the men, still maintaining that lead over Adler and Medeiros. Carrie's working hard for those last reps. Now Carrie Pierce with 100 pull-ups to go. Looking for her fourth career event win here. And remember, she beat everybody last year in Mary, including the men. And Chip doing almost 345 pull-ups at the time. Now, it wasn't with a weight vest, but it shows that she has the capacity oh, yeah. and the stamina to sustain herself in a high-volume event like this. Catherine David's daughter is widening her lead over Haley Adams. David's daughter looking to finish on the podium for the fourth time in her career. Well, not just widening the lead on Haley, but really starting to gain on Carrie Pierce up in the front. All we've been doing is talking about how Carrie's out in the front, out in the front, and Catherine is just slowly creeping up. I mean, she's almost just 10 reps behind. The one... The one person Pierce has been cheering for this entire time <laughs> has been Katrin Davies' daughter. And now Katrin is dangering the plan of her trying to middle between her and Haley. Now Pierce has got to stay ahead of both Davies' daughter and Adams for her to even have a shot of getting into the top three. I mean, if they get on the road and, and Carrie and Katrin are close, it's not going to be a t that, that's not a race. Well, Katrin no, Davies' daughter, think... when you asked her, what do you think of that final event? It's supposed to be the toughest ever. She says, I hope so. Yeah, I, I hope I, it is. I, I, I want to do it. 
So David Zotter now chipping away at Carrie Pierce's lead, and she is within 10 reps. Pierce through 220 pull-ups. David Zotter through 210. Pierce back to work. Pierce is down to four reps at a time. Haley Adams is in third, but now Tia Toomey is starting to creep up on her. And Brooke Wells is way behind 127 reps off the pace being set by Carrie Pierce right now. So Pierce is down to fours, started with tens. Katrin is staying with fives. So every set they do, she gains a rep, which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you're doing 300 <laughs> sure just <does>. a bar, <laughs> or not, or 300 weighted pull-ups, it adds up. Pierce through 232. Haley Adams is through 200, 100 left for her on this movement. Now, this is a problem for, you know, when you when you, you tear your hands early. And the, the problem is, is, like, normally in an event, it's something you can just kind of deal with once you once it's over. But with that weighted vest, it, it puts ah. so much more stress and pain in the grip, if that is the case. Fraser and Chumi now both through... 200 of their 300 pull-ups 28 career event wins for matt fraser and he's about to add a fifth crossfit games championship the best thing for Haley adams meanwhile is for katherine davis daughter to get ahead of carrie pierce that would really take the pressure off of Haley adams although tia toomey is lurking <laughs> she is <laughs> Carrie Pierce through 246 of the 300. David's daughter 10 reps back. Haley Adams is through 211 of her 300 pull-ups. Hey, Pierce what? in that blue uh, top. That's 10 sets of five, and that would be enough if they stick with that five to four tempo that Katrin could catch her by the end of these 50 reps. For the men, Matt Fraser continues to lead. Noah Olson is in second. He's ahead of Jeff Adler, and he's ahead of Justin Medeiros. And Haley Adams is just... You can see both of her hands now look like yeah, it looks like both it looks hands. like it, it's hard to tell if that's the grip of the tape, but there's it looks like there's red on both grips. Oh no, that how do you, feel you don't for shake it. your hands like that. Yeah. Not yeah. So one of the things she could do is that, so she could turn that hand around. It would give a little bit different pull on the on the palm. Feels weird. It's awkward, but again, you're just trying to limp yourself through this last handful. Oh, a handful. 90 pull-ups you got to do but anything to take the pressure off that palm carrie pierce still leads for the women only a 10 rep lead now on katherine davis daughter pierce through 264 of the 300 pull-ups davis daughter through 254 adams now only four reps ahead of tia toomey Noah Olson keeping in second place for the men. He is through 220 of his, of his 300 pull-ups. Davis Otter, the former two-time champion, comes in in second place overall. Kip and now just strong. five reps back of Kerry Pierce. Catching looks strong. Now yeah. here's the job of the coach. This is your job is to navigate your athlete through the weeds. And what I mean by that is when things just get to the brink where you're you're completely exhausted, you're mentally drained, you don't know where you are. That is your coach's job to get you through the end. Cat, stay with fives, 10 second rest. Carrie, you're getting caught. Stick with threes, shorten the rest. Yep. Those are the jobs of the coach. That's the chess game behind the scenes. That is why your coach is there, is to navigate you through the weeds at the end of this event. So just 20 reps to go now for Carrie Pierce. 601 is the mark she's trying to hit. And then it's one final mile run. Davis out are now nine reps behind Carrie Pierce. Toomey, meanwhile, has passed Haley Adams. You guys know you're about to be in an active runway here, okay? Carrie still sticking with four on the left side of your screen. Cat going back up. She's, again, hanging on to fives. Carrie Pierce now with just seven reps remaining. Pop up. Don't rest that much for a set of seven if it's not going to happen. Pop up, do a four, do a three, and get out of there. Davis' daughter creeping up now within four, but Pierce back to work. 
Jeez, just do singles now. Get yourself out of that. Out of, you got to get out of that area and get back on the or get out onto the run. There we go. Nice. And that's it for Carrie Pierce. Go, go, go. One mile remains. Go, Catherine go, Davis on her. Seven reps. And she's got to run. Pierce. She's got to run she for is. her and life. She is. Like she's being chased down by a gun. And she will have a sled dog on her heels, so ah. she's going to have to pick up the pace. Carrie Pierce, though, giving herself a really good chance of maybe getting into the top three right now. She's got to keep at least Katrin Davis' daughter between herself and Haley Adams. Now, David's daughter is done and will try to track down Carrie Pierce. Tia Toomey and Haley Adams, meanwhile, are trading third place. I love how Carrie's going for it. She's not holding back. Uh -uh. She's trying to get as much as in. Here's part of it, too. When you're talking about the game within the game, breaking spirits. One of those is that you're running up to someone, waiting a few seconds, and then sprinting by them so they won't chase you. The other one is getting out of eyesight yep. so they can't at the see start you. of the run. And that's what Carrie did because there's a big turn coming off that 90 degrees from the rig. And if Katrin takes the corner and can't see Carrie, it might keep her from trying to chase her down in the very beginning. Pierce trying to go from fifth into third. Again, she has to get at least one other person between herself and Haley Adams in this event in order to even have a shot to do that. And right now she has two. Katrin Davis' daughter, who's chasing her on this run, who has yet to come around the corner. Tia Toomey, who has passed Haley Adams now in third, is also helping Carrie Pierce. That's Pierce looks up over her shoulder and sees Katrin Davis' daughter finally round the corner. And I agree with you 100%, uh, Chase, that she tried to sprint out because if you watch the tempo of how they're running, Katrin was trying to, trying to catch her breath to get set for that run. Carrie was running for her life. Meanwhile, Haley Adams is still on the pull-up bar, but she is inching closer to that Man. 300 mark. She is through 274 of the 300 pull-ups. Look, Haley is tough as nails. Oh, she's a beast. Tough as nails. Beast. I've seen so many athletes rip hands like that and go to their knees and cry in their milk, and Haley hasn't batted an eye she hasn't complained in fact she's doing bigger pull-up sets than she did when we saw earlier this girl is so dang tough meanwhile in the bottom right noah olson who is in lane number one has tied matt fraser and now leads for the men he's through 295 and counting of his 300 pull-ups that's big for noah olson Olsen coming in in fifth place overall, 465, trying to do the same thing that Carrie Pierce is doing, vault from fifth into the top three. And Olsen right now has Matt Fraser, at least he did, between himself and Justin Medeiros. Olsen on the run as he is done with his 300 pull-ups, and Matt Fraser just got off the pull-up bar as well. Olsen makes the turn. Here come Fraser wow. and Toomey. And wow. Fraser waited for Tia. So if Noah Olsen can hang on to this lead and he can keep Fraser behind him and between himself and Maderos, Olsen's got a shot. He's got a shot of getting on the podium. How big would that be for Noel Olsen after everything he's been going through all weekend long, coming off the second place finish last year, almost leaving him for dead a few times along the last three days. If he can find himself on top of the podium, it might not have been the stellar finish or event that he wanted, but when everything's not going according to plan and you still have a performance like this, this is a good booster for what maybe next year could potentially be for Noel. Carrie Pierce is still ahead of Katherine Davis' daughter, and she still has Davis' daughter and Toomey between herself and Haley Adams. Now, Noah Olsen is on the run and looking a little labored here with his gait. <laughs> and Pierce passing Davis' daughter. So, Whoa. Carrie Pierce looking for a huge event win here. And for Carrie, this is all trusting your training. How many times has you said we've been hammering running, hammering running? I hate running, but we've been hammering it. 
It has all come down to your training when it comes to the end. Matt and Tia continue to run together. Pretty appropriate given what the two of them have accomplished this weekend. Carrie Pierce looking to try to accomplish something that hasn't been done since 2014, and that's put an American woman on the podium. Haley Adams is finally on the run, gutted through those 300 pull-ups. That is a tough 19-year-old kid. Now big for Carrie is yes, she just passed Catching, but it's the same thing we said at the very beginning of the run. You saw her, she saw you, get some distance. <laughs> get as much distance as you can. Here's passing Olsen, who is your leader for the men right now. I tell, I tell you, I'm overly impressed with Carrie Pierce right now. I thought she would have slowed down a little bit. I thought she would have kind of fallen into that mental trap, but she just closed her eyes and went for it. And the fact that she's still holding on to this tempo, look how slow Noah was running. Carrie Pierce is crushing this run. Well, Noah's got to be careful because he's in a good spot right now. He's your leader in the event, but Fraser is creeping up on him. Noah's got to keep Fraser behind him and between himself and Justin Medeiros in this event, and Medeiros is on the run. Matt better tell Tia to start running faster if, he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> if they're going to stay together. Carrie Pierce a while ago took a look over her shoulder and did not see Katherine Davis out her. So Carrie Pierce saving her best effort for last. And looking to lock up 100 points and possibly a spot on the CrossFit Games podium. Bottom right, Noah Olson, your leader for the men. Matt Fraser is creeping up. He takes a look behind him to see what's going on. Fraser Olson and Madero, the only three men on the run. Kerry Pierce for the second straight year has an event where she not only is going to win, but also beat every other man to do the event. Amazing. Amazing. A, a, a testament of fitness, a testament of preparation, a testament of will. I am at all one of the of most Carrie's performance. One of the most incredible performances I've seen at the CrossFit Games as far as I'm not talking about Matt and Tia, their deal, but in a, in a single event, just smashing through all of it, just the entire thing. Carrie Pierce just is going to will herself across the finish line. And she will win event 12 and looking to get herself onto the podium and end a drought for the United States that has lasted since 2014. Forty-seven, fifty-six point six eight seconds. If I had shown you this event and said that is the time that's going to win it, there's no way either one of you would have believed it. I said you misplaced the four to seven days it was supposed to take, not forty-seven minutes. Thank you. Carrie Pierce will block up one hundred points. David's daughter and Toomey are still ahead of Haley Adams, and that would mean. I like that, that Pierce <laughs> is not only crazy, but also on the podium. Matt Fraser and Tia Toomey have passed Noah Olson. The question now is where is Justin Madero? Says Catherine Davis' daughter is going to cross the finish line. Davis' daughter will finish on the podium for the fourth time in her career. Seventy five points and I don't know how but all smiles right now for Katrin Davis daughter as she closes out her 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games with a second place finish. She goes sub 50 on event 12. We talk a lot about her trying to do comeback events within the games itself. But this is a comeback year for Katrin Davis daughter coming off the injury that she had coming out of the open for her to do this after what she's dealt with so far. This might be one of the most impressive performances I've ever seen by Katrin Davis daughter. Matt Fraser 
is going to win another event. He has left Noah Olson behind him, and he is running with his training partner and fellow champion, Tia Toomey. Klaus Madden looked back and knows, like, you had your chance at the turn, bro. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you dare. So Noah Olson needs to hope that Jeff Adler can chase down Justin Medeiros on this run because Olson had needed someone between himself and Medeiros to have his best shot at the podium, but he still might be alive. We have to see how all this shakes out. Matt Fraser, another look over his shoulder. So much communication going on between these two. We've seen Matt turn his head to talk, turn his head to look around. Really haven't seen Tia do a whole lot of turning to talk, but these guys are in full communication this entire race. Home stretch. Toomey and Fraser making the turn together. One final right turn, and then back to the finish line. Two of the most dominant individual performances that we have ever seen at the CrossFit Games. That's the distance that stands between Matt Fraser, Tia Toomey, and history. Matt Fraser rewrites history. Tia Toomey continues to make it. The perfect end to a nearly perfect competition. The two greatest of all time stand alone. They are the fittest on earth and the fittest in history. And now Noah Olson just trying to hang on to whatever hope he has of making it to the podium. He'll get across in second place. Now that'll be good for 75 points. Five hundred forty total points for Olson right now, which puts him thirty five ahead of Justin Medeiros at this point. Now here comes Haley Adams, who is hoping to hang on to third place overall, and it's looking like it won't happen, but what a future ahead for Haley Adams. Tell you what, she showed up last year. She grew up this year. Haley Adams is here to stay. Oh, she's going to be around a long time, too. That good this early? Beast. Here comes Justin Medeiros looking to lock up third place and 55 points. And he is in. And that 55-point total runs Medeiros unofficially to 560. Right now, that keeps him in third place behind Sam Quant, who came in with 590. Now Jeff Adler will come in, and he will earn for fourth place 35 points. Great moment between Sammy and Matt Fraser. <laughs> and Matt gets it. He's not the only one putting in the work. The support system he has is Sammy and everyone else around him. They put in a lot of work to make sure he can succeed the way he does. And he recognizes that. Jeff Adler now starting to walk. Sam Quant 
is still on the pull-ups. So Adler, the only man now on the run. You know, with Jeff Adler, I was so curious at the start of this competition what he was going to do. I didn't know if he mentally had enough meanness to really get after it. But I'm real impressed with some of the things that I saw with him. I mean, he had some ups and downs for sure. Uh, but he threw some haymakers too. Yep. And wasn't afraid. And this is the first time I haven't seen him not be afraid. And I thought, I honestly, talking to him earlier, I just didn't think he was going to be there. I didn't think he was going to be in, their head, in the head. But he, he impressed me. Sam Quant down to singles. He came in with 590 points. So he'll earn 15. Assuming he gives the full effort here, and that'll give him 605, and should, and this is all an official, should keep him in second place overall. Jeff so Adler making the turn home. And Bill, as you said before, I, I was feeling the same way about Jeff, and it's funny about Jeff, he's kind of taking the no Olsen route because we remember yeah. him from the, the volunteer days <laughs> from the Dubai CrossFit Championship. And now look at him where he's at. We saw the same thing for no Olsen back in the regional days yeah. with Dave Castro. It, sometimes people say you can't train that competitive switch, but you can because we saw Tia do the same thing. And look what it's done for her in 15 and 16 especially. That mental weakness that she had and that self-confidence that wasn't there is now gone and has created the monster that we see today yeah. with Tia Toomey. If Adler can get there with the skill set that he already has, I'm excited to see what he's capable of in the future. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, round those edges off a little bit. <laughs> get a little bit more experience where you, you get used to taking some risks and not being afraid to fail, not being afraid to let someone win and get out there and mix it up. So you really see where you are. And uh, yeah, you're right. He's going to be a force to, to contend with for a while. Jeff Adler closing out his 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games with a fourth place finish in the toughest event ever in games history. And he will earn 35 points for that effort. And certainly impressed at times in this competition and was only one of the two men to actually beat Matt Fraser in an event. Now, Brooke Wells, the final woman out on the course. There's two athletes left. Brooke Wells and Sam Quan and Wells looks like she has a oh. sizable amount of blood smeared on her shorts. I mean, we heard that from the demo team. Yep. I mean, no one was left unscathed yep. testing this event, and it's bound to happen. This isn't unfamiliar. Maybe if you're seeing it for the first time, it might seem like a murder scene running down the last mile, but this is just kind of par for the course. It happens in events like this sometimes. It really is, isn't it? but it is one of the worst things that happens. It completely shuts you down. And that's what was so impressive about Haley Adams is the same thing happened to her, but we didn't see her slow down or stop at all. I mean, the, she was able to stay on the bar even though she was slipping and dealt with it. Haley Adams with basically a boxer tape job on both of her hands, and she's there with Tasia Persevich. And Adams obviously disappointed, but I think when she has some time to sort of reflect on this, she should be really happy with what she accomplished here. If you're not impressed with Haley Adams, I don't know what you've yeah. been watching the past few if days. If you're not a believer now that she is the future and someone that is fully capable of winning this eventually, I don't know what you guys were watching all weekend and even what you're watching now is like, yeah, you should be. It's good to see him upset. That's the competitor right, right there. If she was like, you know what? I'm proud of the job that I did. Then she would have, she doesn't have that killer instinct. She should be pissed. I mean, of course she's going to be proud of how she did. But the and fact she that she, the fact that she didn't win, that's the competitor. The competitor wants to win always. Here comes Brooke Wells and once she crosses the finish line, Nine of the ten athletes who started this event 
will have finished it. Sam Quant, the only man left out there on the final one mile run. One day will come where those tears of happiness, or, or sorry, tears of sadness for Haley Adams are going to be tears of joy. It's just hard to think that she doesn't have a CrossFit Games championship in the future after what you saw here. Yeah, it's not an if, it's a win. Now Brooke Wells will close things out. One hour, 19.01 seconds for Brooke Wells. Are we at the hour mark? So, disclaimer, those watching this for the first time, please do not try this at home. <laughs> please do not try this at home. We want to make sure as we hit every 30 minutes, we put it out there. This is a superhuman event. These are superhuman athletes, and this is just an event that is not made for mortal men and women. Sam Quan has made the turn on the left. Again, Quan came in with 590 points. And it looks like, unofficially, he's going to stay in second place. A lot of people didn't even mention his name in stage one nope. as no. far as a guy who could be in the top five. Maybe, maybe top ten. And I'll be honest, it's not like we said his name a whole bunch over the last three days. But the cons consistency is key, but also consistency almost kind of gets you lost in the shuffle you're not doing horrible so we talk about you you're not winning an event so we talk about you and he's just staying in his lane he's not speeding in a school zone right now he's keeping it straight down the middle so his performance the consistency is something that was very impressive on samuel kwan the tia toomey is consoling brooke wells and i mean you think about just <laughs> is that no Olson just <laughs> yeah. out in the dirt? I mean, you just think about the the mental, emotional, and physical toll that these last three days have taken on. Then you cross the finish line, and all that just is released at once. Think of it like the trail run we saw Friday night, where they, you know, you you when you're in an event like this, say just the event, you're doing everything you can to keep that switch on. You're going to ignore the pain, you're going to ignore the suffering, you're going to ignore your breathing, and then when you cross the finish line, you turn it off. At the end of 12 events in three days and everything that they've gone through all year long, those emotions come out, right? The realness rears its head because they're done. They don't have to suppress that. And not even just the emotional side of that, but the physical pain of that. I mean, you can block out. These athletes are very good at blocking out the pain and the discomfort of the events that they're dealing with and the cumulative effect of that, then when you cross the finish line on the last event, you have the emotional release, then you feel it, you feel all the pain of that weekend right after that. So, you're right, it's a big, big emotional uh, drop after everything. We saw Catherine Davis out a second ago sitting with Noah Olson. Catherine knows she can take the vest off, right? I mean, she's still it's, got the thing off. It's keeping her warm right I now. I think she's Sled on up. high alert. <laughs> Just in case Dave Castro says, do it again, but in reverse. They said we're going to do real Murph this time. Sam Quant is putting the finishing touches on this last one-mile run. It's like Ben Bergeron speaking with Brooke Wells there. Hey, that's the realness of competition. It's tough. You know, let's just go back a They're handful. They're invested. Of, let's go back a handful of months here. We didn't even know any of this was going to happen. Right. The fact that we got to have the CrossFit Games, the level of programming that we got to the CrossFit Games, the competition that we had, whether or not Matt and Tia ran away with their first place position, the rest of it was, I mean, honestly, one of the most remarkable battles for the second to fifth that I've ever seen of all the 10 years that I've broadcasted. 
watched the CrossFit yeah. Games. I mean, this it's been one of the most incredible races of all time. How many times can you put history on all these, these different pieces? I don't uh, understand. Man. Now San Juan just about done that was probably one with of that one mile run. And you just heard Noah Olson saying that was probably one of the hardest workouts I've ever done. Oh, yeah. I want to know what the one's hard. Really? I'm yeah. shocked by that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was second? Well, and it's, if you took it, if you look at this compared to the swim repeat event, Matt was saying that was one of the hardest ones he's ever done. Noah said, I didn't think I was going to finish the third round. So when you look at that short interval, and then you have this mega long, I got two ends of the spectrum. Sam Quant will take fifth in the event, but it's going to end on a positive note for him because it's looking like he will finish in second place overall, unofficially, but Sam Quant, a podium finish here at the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games. Good for that guy. Wow. Good job. He's a new dad. He trains by himself. He's dealing with the craziness of that life, and here he is competing at the CrossFit Games, and not only competing very well, but also finishing on the podium.